morning. Welcome to the Belong Collective's Digital Edition. My name is Curtis Smith, and I'm glad you're with us today. I am going to be leading you on some songs of worship, um, and I couldn't think of a more fitting song than something from the Beatles. Myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be, and in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. But though we may be parted, there is still a chance that we may see There will be an answer Let it be 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 There will be an answer Let it be Let it be Let it be There is still the light that shines on me. Shine on till tomorrow, let it be. Wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, 
and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Don't forget to go to our website, thebelongcollective.org, to help us financially. Thank you for being with us this Sunday. See ya. Bye. See ya. See ya. past month, I have had a lot of time on my hands that I've never had before. Uh, I'm sure you're feeling that as well. Um, I decided to do something that I've always wanted to do, and uh, that is write and record original music. Um, two weeks ago, I got out of bed with this guitar part in my head, and I quickly recorded it into my phone, humming along with it, 
and uh, within a few days I wrote the lyrics to this next song. It's called All I Am. Welcome to the Belong Collective. So excited that you're here with us this morning, this Sunday morning for this digital gathering. Again, what a unique way to gather in this time and place. But we're so thankful that you're here, that you're sharing it with your friends, that ultimately we can meet in this new and creative way. And so uh, just want to let you know, uh, you can connect with us at thebelongcollective.org. You can connect with us through our social media. We don't want it to just be a one-way conversation. We would love for this to be something that we talk about through the week. We're launching a new series today. uh, And the title of that series is It Was All a Dream, the Story of Joseph. And ultimately what we're looking at is this story of this dreamer named Joseph and his particular experience. Have you ever experienced unplanned circumstances, unsure times, or feeling like everything is out of your control. (laughs) Yeah, right now, right? Like for many of us, this is our current reality. Uh, And this is in many ways the story of Joseph. As I took some time to think about what might be relevant for us in the coming weeks, I thought, hey, the story of Joseph is a great reminder of God's presence amidst Uh, our lives when we feel like everything is out of control and everything is uncertain and all of our plans that we've made for our life are starting to fall apart or aren't 
uh, coming to fruition the way we had seen that happening and and how God is still faithful even in those times. And so it's going to be an interesting story for us, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it was all a dream. The, the reason for that title is because Joseph was a dreamer. He had all kinds of dreams, and ultimately his journey includes his dreams and and these visions that God gives him about his life and his role and his purpose. And so we're going to be looking at that, and maybe you have a purpose or a vision or a dream for your life. And maybe you even feel like God's given you that dream or that purpose. Like you really feel called to what uh, your your vision for your life is. And, and maybe for you, you see this exact path to get there. And we kind of see that with Joseph, but ultimately it becomes this kind of zigzag type path because uh, it doesn't go exactly as he had planned. And for many of us, that is the case. We might have a purpose. We might have a story. We might have a vision. We might have a dream for our life, um, but how we get there often looks very different than how we had in our heads to get there. And ultimately, God is is usually redeeming brokenness within our story, hurt within our story, and, and, and teaching us through that whole process. And, and usually the end result, and we'll see this in Joseph's case, is that uh, the journey becomes uh, the beauty of the story, the power of the story, uh, the, the part of the story that reminds you of how God can take a completely broken, completely out of control situation and redeem it for his good. And so uh, we're going to see that in this story. Also, uh, there's parts of Joseph's story where you, you wonder if he wishes that it was all a dream, right? The the, the, the circumstances he mul- multiple times throughout the story finds himself in. Uh, when we say it was all a dream, have you ever uh, been in a place where you're like, okay, pinch me. This has got to be a dream, right? <laughs> Maybe it was for you like, like three weeks into quarantine, you were like, this has got to be a dream. This is a simulation, right? Like this can't be real. Like, and you're like, I'm going to wake up from this and this isn't going to be uh, real. This can't be happening. And there's multiple times in Joseph's story where you wonder if he feels that way. Uh, we, we must assume he feels that way because, because he's found himself in just completely absurd situations and places where ultimately he's got to be hurting. He's got to be in a lot of pain and ultimately like just hopeless. And so if you've ever been in that place, this is going to be a great series for you. Or if you're currently in that place, this is going to be a great series for you because I think it's going to be encouraging for us. We're going to get to see somebody who's ultimately a hero of the Bible, Joseph, who even as a hero, had to face all kinds of trials and trials that ultimately for us would be like, it's over. That happened. It's, it's over now. Like there's, there's no coming back from that. Yet you see constantly with the story of Joseph that like, even when he's completely beaten down, even when all just everything stacked against him, uh, God is continuing to be in his corner and continuing to redeem even in the most broken of circumstances. And so we're going to see that in the story. Now we're in Genesis 37. And uh, in Genesis 37, verse 1 starts this way. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them about his brothers. Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he had made an ornate robe for him. Okay, so a few things based on this reality. First of all, this is setting up the whole story. It's telling you a little bit about Joseph's background. So the first part of Joseph's background that is very interesting and and maybe a shocker to you if you're not familiar with the Bible or if you're familiar with the Bible, but you just don't know that this exists there. Um, his dad had uh, 13 children with four different women. Yes, <laughs> this is in the Bible, uh, and this is one of the heroes of the Bible, Jacob. And um, it's complicated family dynamics at the foundation, right? Like this story uh, begins with Joseph being born to this very complicated family situation. Joseph is the youngest. Now, in this particular culture, in this ancient culture, if you're the youngest, you're the least privileged because the eldest always holds the highest 
privilege. And so in essence, the eldest is the one who's going to receive uh, the most blessing from the father. And, and, and ultimately, the eldest is the one who's, who's going to carry on the family's honor, who's going to carry on the family's legacy, who, who kind of becomes the new patriarch, if you will, of uh, the eldest son, of, of the, of the uh, tribe, if you will, at this time. Like that's kind of how it works. And in this case, we see a complete reversal upside down. Joseph is the one who is honored. He's the one who ultimately is blessed by the father. And you have sibling ri- sibling rivalry just all over. Like they're half brothers, so they have different moms. And you got to believe, I mean, I you don't know this for sure, but you got to believe the moms are working probably to, to, to get their son's particular privilege within it. Like you kind of see this, uh, you have these, these 12 sons and you kind of see a little bit of a glimpse of the disciples in some ways of like how the disciples are always positioning for who's going to be the highest. And you, you probably see this within the family dynamics of this family, just like it might be in any family. Sibling rivalry is a real thing. But in this particular case, it's amped up because they have different moms. There's all kinds of reasons for them to be positioning for power. Yet the coat of blessing, this coat of many colors that many of us connect with Joseph is given to him by his father to represent his position of greatness, his position of blessing. And that can't make the other brothers feel too good about their particular position. And then we find out that Joseph is like out in the field and he sees his brothers and they're either slacking off at work or, you know, whatever they're doing. And ultimately he brings back a bad report about his brothers. So he's kind of this like 17 year old tattletale on his brothers. And, uh, and, and this is the position we uh, start with. This is the foundation of this particular story. What a crazy way to start the story. What a crazy, um, like Joseph to, to be born to this family, to be born in this circumstance. What an interesting thing. And he, here's what I want to say for many of you, you have been placed in particular circumstances and you feel like God can't work in your circumstance, like the foundation of your circumstance. It's not about God not being able to work right now. It's about the fact that like, I was just dealt the worst cards, whether you feel like you're one of the brothers that like should have been positioned for greatness, but ultimately, uh, you know, you, you weren't, uh, whatever position you feel like you've been handed. Here, here's what I want to say. God is at work in flawed people, families, and circumstances. God is at work in flawed people, family, and circumstances. You are not disqualified from a story of greatness because of your family background, because of your decisions, um, because of your lack of wisdom, because of the poor relationships that exist in your life, um, because of the, 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 the deck you've been handed, maybe. Does that make sense? Like you are not disqualified from a story of greatness and meaning and purpose because of those things. And for some of us, that's what we need to hear today. We just need to re- be reminded that like, I'm not disqualified. Like I'm, I, I can still have a story that, that is meaningful, that has purpose, even amidst the brokenness. Like if Joseph can, If this story is going somewhere that is meaningful and this is the foundation of it, uh, your particular foundation is redeemable. God is at work in flawed people, families, and circumstances. Now the story continues. When his brothers saw that their father loved him, Joseph, more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And so like, this is very interesting because right here in this particular part, like you're seeing like Joseph is acknowledging his position, but now he's like, I've even been getting visions and dreams that my position is better than yours. And <laughs> that's not helpful. And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream <laughs> real quick. He had another dream and he kept it to himself because he realized that he probably wasn't doing himself any good by sharing it with his brothers. No, he goes ahead and he tells it to his brothers again. (laughs) And he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down 
to me when he told his father as well as his brothers his father rebuked him and said this is the what is this dream you had will your mother and i and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you his brothers were jealous of him but his father kept this matter in mind you know one of the things i think about when i think about the story is I've kind of always come to this story with Joseph as kind of the punk younger brother. I'm an oldest brother. So I know a thing or two about a punk younger brother. I had two of them. I'm just kidding. They're not punks. But ultimately, I know what it's like to be nagged by your younger brothers. And I know what it's like to have this feeling of like them kind of bringing problems to you and all this, right? And I kind of always saw Joseph as this arrogant punk younger brother who felt very entitled, who had his coat. And um, I used to think this way, and, and maybe I still do in some ways, but I also kind of feel sorry for Joseph. He doesn't know better. He's a product of his circumstance. His father has shown favoritism, and this favoritism is not working out for Joseph or for his brothers. And ultimately, it's creating all kinds of uh, family dynamics that are not helpful. And so as I think of this particular story, I'm like, okay, Joseph, yeah, he's 17. He should probably be wise enough to know, like, keep sharing these dreams with your brothers and it's not going to end well for you. It's going to create this jealousy and envy that they have for you. But ultimately, he doesn't know better. He's been told he's the best. He's been given the coat. He's he's brought reports back to his father and seen that that's been o- only positioned him in a better place. And so he's a product of these circumstances. So it seems as if at this particular point, Joseph's pretty unwise, naive, not quite the leader we're going to see later on in the story. But these reports he keeps bringing back and ultimately the position that his father has given him and the favoritism that his father has shown him consistently brings about jealousy. And so so what is what does it mean to be jealous? Feeling or showing envy of someone or their achievements and advantages. So to be jealous is to be envious. And what is envy? A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. So in this particular case, like it's clear that the brothers envy Joseph's position. His position, his possessions, his qualities, his luck, all of this his future possessions, like he, 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 well, he has the coat currently. That's a possession that they're clearly envious of because of what it represents. It represents blessing and they are missing out on that blessing. And all the qualities that he has as, as being the, the one who's favored by his father and ultimately the luck. It's like, how lucky are you? You're the youngest. You're not supposed to be the privileged one. And so all of these things, they have multiple reasons to be envious and, and they are. And, and here's what I want to say about envy. Envy and jealousy always lead to bad outcomes. Envy and jealousy always lead to bad outcomes. I love what James says about uh, jealousy and envy. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind evil of every kind. It's like at the root of every kind of evil is this idea of selfish ambition, envy, and jealousy. And we're going to see that in this story. Next week, we're going to see some of that evil begin to sprout up, and we're going to see the consequences of that. As the story of Joseph progresses, we're going to see the results of that lingering jealousy and envy, but we're also going to see God's faithfulness amidst the detours of Joseph's life. Joseph had a plan. It was all planned out. He was supposed to be the one to inherit his father's kingdom. He even had a dream about how he would be the ruler, if you will. Multiple dreams, obviously, as we just heard, in fact. Um, But he didn't know how he would arrive at that outcome like how he would get there. Here's what he did know though, or here's what he found out along the way. God is faithful no matter what detours our journey may take. God is faithful no matter what detours our journey may take. The goal for this series is that we would begin to believe this reality. 
that God is faithful even as we struggle even as our story begins to feel like it's going off the rails, even as it's out of control, even as we're struggling with the whole setup and foundation of our story, that ultimately God is faithful and can work amidst that story for our good. And so if you're here and you're struggling with jealousy and envy, please know that the outcomes of that are not going to be a good story. And so if you're looking in our world and you're seeing others and you're seeing the blessings that they're experiencing or the good that they're having in their life and ultimately what's welling up in you is like smiles on the surface, but inside you're like, oh, that person doesn't deserve that. I can't believe that person has that. I can't believe that's happening. Like you need to check yourself. Nothing good is going to come from that place. Or it could be the opposite. Like I've also seen jealousy and envy this way. When someone has a crash and burn moment and like you're like, oh, too bad. But on the inside or even if you're on the outside saying this, like you're reveling in everything in their life beginning to crash and burn. It's because you're probably jealous and envious of the position that they hold or the possessions they have or ultimately the luck that they've experienced in life. And the truth is nothing good is going to come from that place. And so For today, as we look at the story and even the foundation of jealousy and envy that begins this journey of Joseph, we need to be mindful that jealousy and envy can quickly creep up in our heart. Uh, We can become very selfish and all about us and see everyone else as an obstacle to what we want, what we desire. And then over time, we can convince ourselves that everyone else is an obstacle to what we deserve, what is rightfully ours. And then over time, we can begin to act on those feelings and we can make decisions that can drastically affect our lives and other people's lives. And so we should be actively working to root out any jealousy and envy. We should be really checking our heart, checking our thoughts, checking our our words, and really thinking about how we can protect ourselves against jealousy and envy because the outcomes of that are always, always negative. And then we can be reminded that no matter what our family background is, no matter what our things that we've done, like the, the mistakes we've made, the brokenness maybe that we've even experienced or brought upon ourselves, no matter what that is, God is capable to redeem any story. A story whose foundation is on a father who has 13 kids to four different wives and ultimately is playing favorites and creating all type of strife between his sons and and they're they're jealous and envious and angry and literally the word hate is used in this like there is serious problems in this family. This is like a Jerry Springer family in the Old Testament right here. And and ultimately God is going to work for the good of Joseph, but even of this family. And for some of us, we believe like God could never work for the good of my story. Uh, The circumstances I've found myself in, God could never work for the good of the circumstances that I've found myself in. Or maybe you even feel guilty. You're like, yeah, well, maybe God could work in my circumstance, but I've brought too much upon myself. I've done too much wrong personally. Well, here's the deal. Uh, There's many people who do things wrong in this story and God ultimately is still faithful. God is still pouring out his blessing on them. And so my hope is that we would see that God is not just faithful, but God is able to redeem any brokenness that finds its way into our story and ultimately detours our path. Well, hey, God can bring us right back onto the path and plan and purpose that he has for our life. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, if there's anyone here who's working through jealousy and envy of someone else, God, I pray that you would just reveal that to them, that they would see that in their spirit, that they would own that, 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 that that's something they're feeling, that that's something they're experiencing. And then ultimately, God, they would bring that to you and that your spirit would give them the power to work through that and release that and, and that they would see it as something to, to, to give attention to, that they need to work on that part of their life. And they need to let go of that because there's nothing good that's going to come from that. And so they need to rid that from their spirit, rid that from their thoughts, and rid that from their actions, God. Uh, We thank you that you can renew us, 
that if we are a jealous person, you can change that about us. If we are envious, you can renew us. And so we're asking that you renew our minds and our hearts. Um, renew all of us. We all need renewal. And if this is an area where we need it, please show up by your spirit and show us that. And God, if, we're, if any of us are here and we're feeling so guilty or we're feeling just so broken, or maybe we're even feeling trapped by our circumstance, God, I just pray that we would see that you can make a way where there just is no way. Uh, you can make a way no matter what our family background is, no matter, no matter what circumstance we found ourselves in, uh, no matter what is happening in our life right now. As many people right now are experiencing so much brokenness, God, even right now amidst all this brokenness, you speak into our lives and say, I remain faithful and I am able to do a new thing. I am able to redeem the brokenness that you're experiencing even right now. And so God, would we continue to put our trust and our faith in you, God, as you continue to show up. God, be with us through this series. May we learn from the story of Joseph more about you and who you are and what it looks like to follow you. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Helps going. You guys went out Friday for a uh, to, to serve the homeless. Tell us a little bit about it. Um. Yeah, it went good. Um. We served. We we prepared for forty, and we served um about thirty two last night. Awesome. Um, yeah, and um, we've been putting pretty much like food packages together and um handing those out and then as we can we've been supplementing with um other items like um clothing which includes t-shirts socks underwear and uh, we recently had some hygiene kits donated as well um which were fantastic and um we took those out the last two weeks and those hygiene kits are amazing they include um hand sanitizer soap, uh, a washcloth, toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, band-aids, antiseptic wipes. So um, just for context, for people who don't know about TBC Helps, like we're, we're helping in a variety of ways, but probably the main way we're helping with TBC Helps is um, kind of taking over what used to be the Bethesda Mobile Mission. So we've been connected to helping in that way uh, and also doing Sanctuary Harrisburg. And when Sanctuary Harrisburg had to kind of pause because of everything related to COVID-19 and Bethesda Mobile Mission had to pause due to that. We were like, well, what are some creative ways we can help? Where are the actual needs? And we took the first couple of weeks to just kind of assess where are the needs at, where are the gaps and what could we possibly do? And we found out that like kind of the weekend um, need was to continue what Bethesda Mobile Mission was doing, which was the food and some clothing and some supplies. And so mm -hmm. Uh, so you and two others primarily, I mean, I've been out multiple times too, but you and two others primarily, you're keeping like a small cell trying to do this mm -hmm. safe and right and proper amidst the CDC yeah. guidelines. And, and we're really trying to do this in a healthy way. And, uh, I even got pictures of you guys like setting up cones and tables and you're doing a great job of staying safe and getting it out there. Can you give us an idea of like what a packet includes? Obviously you told us the hygiene kit, but what else? is being given out on an average night or what are some things that might uh, go out on, on some of these to the, to those in need? Sure. Um, so basically we put together um, food bags um, and those include um, like a, a GIF, like peanut butter cup type of deal and um, like applesauce, crackers, uh, protein pack and uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, peanut butter cups, right? What's that? Aren't there peanut butter cups in there? So let me tell you about the peanut butter cups. Oh, I got the wrong peanut butter cups. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> hey, they are peanut I butter cups. I'm just going to say I they are peanut butter cups. So. <laughs> 
the first quick story when we when, when we first this is totally um, gonna make it i'm not editing this out this is great we're fine we're communicating now i went on a trip to shop for this on thursday and they gave me a supply list and i'm realizing now that peanut butter cups were the jiff peanut butter cups but i did not get jiff on the on the list it's probably still my fault. I probably should have should have sent for clarity. Um, but instead, I bought Reese's peanut butter cups because I'm a big fan of Reese's. And uh, you know, how can you so not no go for the Reese's? You were just like, yeah, yeah, Reese's. I thought, hey, we're giving these people a candy. I, hey, that's a neat. Okay, that is a that's necessity. All right. So uh, yeah, that's so, funny. Just to add to all of this too, um, two things. When we initially went shopping for this. Um, one of the members in, in this small group, Matt, I told him we were kind of splitting up and going shopping for these things. And I said, get peanut butter cups. And he brought back Reese's peanut butter cups. And I said, no. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> so in my email to you to go shopping, I thought I was more specific. You better check your email again because I attached, I thought I used more specific <laughs> words and I attached a picture of the actual package of Jeff peanut butter. Did that you, you attach a picture? I didn't see a picture. <laughs> yes. uh, it's probably then, totally so on I, me. This is 100% on me. I'm, I'm going to own it before I even see, but uh, I'm going to take a look while you're talking. Keep talking. Keep telling them what else is in there. Anyways. So we do those bags and um, we have also um, asked our friends at Yellow Bird Cafe in Harrisburg if they would um, help out with this endeavor. And it's kind of cool because um, we are purchasing 40 uh, bags of um, like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a banana. That's what they're putting together for us. And uh, we're purchasing that from them. So it's kind of cool that we get to support a local small business um, and support uh, those in need as, as we're serving them each Friday night. So um, yeah, I think it's amazing that we've seen so much generosity from our community and beyond too. like so many people within the belong collective, but even outside of the Belong collective have given to TBC help specifically, which is, like a way that yep. you can go onto our website and you can give, you can click the give tab and you can drop it down and, and press, you know, TBC helps and, and give in that way. And we've had over $3,900 given to TBC helps since we started this. Um, That's amazing. Our community is incredibly generous and we've been putting all of that money toward this specific need. Um, your generosity has purchased uh, clothing, essential food and water and uh, and we're going to continue to determine <laughs> we're going to get ali a stand for her phone with the tbc helps money um <laughs> no, uh, but we're going to we're going to continue to determine like how we can best um utilize that money like like again like you're hearing here maybe potential for like laundry or other things in the future if there's ways that we can systematize or even briefly systematize a way to get resources that are essential in the hands of people who ultimately are the most marginalized we want to keep doing that and so if you want to keep and continue giving to to tbc helps um and we're going to keep updating you as as things change because certainly they are going to change they are going to um uh evolve as the need evolves um but i just wanted to say ali i'm so thankful for you spearheading this taking this on and your crew doing it uh steve and matt are doing a fabulous job as well yeah they're doing a great job i'm so thankful for for them and you and so thank you so much and uh is there any closing words you have for anybody uh on tbc helps and what we're doing what we're about um i would say if you could just pray um mm. like i've had a lot of people um like as we go out just say can you pray for me can you pray for me and like yes like we can and we will and we do um but like it's so hard because like you just want to like normally when you're praying with somebody you're close to them and you're comforting them or you're you know and it's just like that doesn't happen and like i think whereas we would be more social and 
connecting with these individuals. It's a very systematized transactional experience. So like if you could just pray for these individuals and um, the, the care that they're getting like physical and like spiritual, mental, emotional, like that would be, that would be my, my closing thoughts, I guess. Amen. Yeah, definitely pray. Lots of need out there and lots of need for you guys too. pray to be praying for the team that's going out and that ultimately people would feel loved through this, you know, and feel valued through this. And, and, and it can be hard to keep a distance from somebody while you're also providing a resource because it feels like you said, transactional. And so praying that they would yep. feel seen and known and loved, um, even through it. And to end on a proper note, this is what the list said. Four <laughs> packs, four packs of PB cups, 36 per pack, which I believe there were in the uh, Reese's, there, yes, um, there, uh, which right. is, which is fascinating. But then here's the deal. I just copied and pasted the text and I didn't even know there were images attached. That is definitely what she meant by peanut butter cup. I lose. I got the wrong thing. I guess I, I'll, I'll buy back the Reese's uh, cups if we're if we're not going to hand them out. You know, I I'm a fan of Reese's. No, That's no, all right. Okay. I'm That's okay. I'm okay with that transaction. <laughs> all right. I'll see you, Allie. Thank you for all you're doing. All right. Yep.
fire form Come shake the ground With the sound of river Let heaven roar And fire form Come shake the ground With the sound of revival Let heaven roar And fire form Come shake the ground With the sound of revival My God's not there He's surely alive and he's living on the inside Roaring like a lion My God's not dead He's surely alive and he's living on the inside Roaring like a lion My God's not dead He's surely alive and he's living on the inside Roaring like a lion My God's not dead He's surely alive and he's living on the inside Roaring like a lion Have a great week, everyone. God bless.